I overlooked the vacant crowd of the food court of all the hungry masses. I looked over them and said, Today is a fine day to kick Sullivan's ass for what he did to my pootie tang. I will chug this drink and march onwards to victory. Let's go! And with that dr dramatic introduction well out of the way, I may introduce you to you to another fine edition of Dead Rising 2. And what is going to happen in this fine edition of Dead Rising 2, you ask? Well, we shall be taking down Sullivan in the most manly ways possible. No weapons at all. Only fist fighting and CQC is allowed here. What's up? Chuck, it looked like Sullivan was trying to break open those locked elevators in the Yucatan. He must be going to the roof. The roof, the roof, the roof is on fire. We don't need no water, let the motherfuckers burn. Burn, motherfuckers, burn. Anyway, with that song out of the way, we just simply need to get to Sullivan. That's all we need to do. Hey, this elevator is kind of full. Do you mind clearing the room? Thank you. Some people are so rude. So this is the moment we've all been waiting for. The devil under our noses. The person that we thought we could trust most is now our greatest enemy. And that's a lot of zombies and untouchables wearing off. So we'll just help ourselves to another one of these. And just slip on through. I was constantly mentioned that I should probably have just gotten the super slicer head or maybe the flaming skull. But I found this much more appealing. I love how they can't do shit to me. It's beautiful. Chuck. It is 3am, and onwards there is your destiny. Let's find the truth. So you're behind this. You killed all these people for money. After everything that's happened, that's what you think? The money's secondary. We're trying to save lives here, Chuck. Saving lives? What the hell are you talking about? Oh, uh, come on. We had to take the necessary steps to ensure a consistent supply. We can't make the drug without queens, Chuck. A lot of queens. You can thank Isabella for that. And TK looting the city? But that's not about money? He went off the rails. He was well paid for his part. Then he just got greedy. His work, not ours. Whatever happened to do no harm, Sullivan? Open your eyes, Chuck. Do you have any idea how many people are affected in this country? Doctors, politicians, CEOs. Some of our country's best are infected. Even your little girl, Chuck. What would happen to your cute little time bomb if she didn't get her drug? Fortune City was a small price to pay to ensure our country's way of life. You murdered these people! Acceptable losses! This wasn't the first time and it won't be the last! You bastard! You did it! You caused the Vegas outbreak too, didn't you? You killed my wife, destroyed my family! Everything that we have done has been absolutely necessary! And so this is Sullivan's master plan. All along he has been harvesting the queens simply because it was the way to rescue those of the finest of the country. And I saw a lobster around here once. Ah, oh, that, lo that lobster's been destroyed! We'll start the battle in just a moment after I steal some of this good food. After maybe not. Looks like I'll have to live without the food. But as I said, and I'll be keeping up on my promise. Sullivan, it's time to go man to man. How did I take damn? How did I damage you? If you've noticed, Sullivan's taken damage and it went down when I climbed that ledge. And I just kicked you in the face, motherfucker. Boom. So yes, I actually am cheating on this a little bit. I do have the hand-to-hand -hand combat book in my goddamn inventory. Shit. 
and it does give you an acceptable amount of stun length when you double leg drop him. But I've also found that elbow dropping him has a strangely wide radius. And also, Sullivan reminds me of Solid Snake for some obscure reason, mostly because of his CQC abilities, and I'll be demonstrating that, like so, in a minute. So if I get a heavy weapon out, and I try to melee strike him, see what happens. Come on. If I try to strike him, come on, get up. No, no, okay, he just punches me in the face. This isn't working. For some reason, he's not actually doing the animation that he should be doing. Let's have a look at this again. And he's just punching me off the ledge now. This isn't going anywhere near as well as I thought it would. There we go. That's exactly what happens. And that's why he makes me think of Solid Snake. Understandable yet? Boom! There we go. It's actually possible, while he is stunned like that, to take a good few hits out of him with a heavy weapon like the Defiler or the Lightsaber, but for purposes beyond my control, or, well, within my control, rather, I will not be using them. And if you may have noticed, there are explosions going off everywhere, just like that one just there. There is actually an AC-130 travelling the area above us, and Sullivan has the ability to send out flares so that he may actually bomb us occasionally. So that's another reason why you probably don't want to stay on the lower levels. But alternatively, Sullivan also has grenades. You may notice occasionally around here, if you look at there, you can actually fall through those holes into the lower level where we were previously. Whoa, that was close. Boom! Oh god, ow! Ow! That really hurts. And Sullivan is actually quite tough. Yes, a tough final boss battle. Who would have thought? It's so rare in this day and age. Also, I need to drink this painkiller. I was hoping to do this without using any health items, but sometimes you have to cut your losses. Okay, don't use the sword, Chuck. This isn't a sword run. You are not the knight or a paladin. There we go, right in the face. Also, Sullivan has a wide amount of instability frames, if you may have noticed. Once he sidesteps your attacks, he basically, you can't touch him, but sometimes I find you can catch him at the last second with an elbow drop. No other attack does this. If you don't have the hand to hand book, this would go on twice as long, maybe three times as long as it normally is. But I just find the elbow drop is actually a good way of catching him unaware. And Sullivan, I think it's time to kiss your lights goodbye after I get back up there and kick your ass because I accidentally fell off the ledge. Ah, Sullivan, I will end you in the only way fucking possible and that's maybe when I get back up there, I will end you in the only way possible for I am Chuck Green, destroyer of worlds and I can't stay on a fucking ledge. <laughs> Fuck's sake, you're such a cheater, Sullivan. Okay, we really need to use that beer hat. It's you or me, Sullivan. It's you or me. And I'll end you like I did the Vegas outbreak. Come on. Must end you. End. E oh, God. Ow. Can't. Fuck. Tits. I will end you like the way I did Mars. And I will end you by drinking from this beer hat. Oh, I'm going to be sick. Thank you for shooting me, but I'm going to be sick now. Yep, I'm dead. Yes! Yes! <laughs> you thought I was going to die, but I didn't! This is the end for you, Sullivan. Do you have any last words?
the good guys, Chuck. Not you. Channel 6 Action News. This is Chuck Green. You want the scoop of a lifetime? There's a bunker full of survivors in Fortune City. And I've got the proof of what happened here. I need rescue choppers, and I need them right now. And so that's the end of Sullivan. He was torn in half by an AC-130. For the price of Chuck's wife, I think that's a quite deserving death. Sometimes, we must purge things from this world because they should not exist. And Chuck Green is a man of the people. Could they be? What possibly could have happened? We've defeated the ultimate bad. So how can they not be on the chopper? And all was silent throughout the night. And there you have it, everyone. The credits to Dead Rising 2. We let them roll. Is this really how things were supposed to be? Is this some um, way of leading up to a sequel of some sort, some extra DLC? Could this answer be raised in quest? Uh, could an answer be raised in Case West? I have no idea. But for all of Dead Rising's two, uh, Dead Rising 2's fault, you have to love the game. In this game, they definitely have taught us that zombies are overdone and ridiculous, and there's only one way to treat them. And we've done just that. We've worn dresses, we have thrown parasols, we have looted and mugged to our heart's content, all amidst the chaos of an entire zombie infestation that has wiped out millions. Chuck Green, a man who dotes on his daughter, returns from the fight of a lifetime, tearing a man in half with an AC-130 to find that his daughter and his extra booty tang, or pooty tang, has gone. And what is Chuck to do now? To roam Fortune City forever, looking for his love and his daughter in hopes that he may start his life again? Only time will tell. It's been a good run. And maybe this is the end. I don't know how to feel about that. Chuck has been through a lot. And the relationship between him and his daughter has always been heartwarming at best. And because it's not a simple storyline plot of 
the ultimate evil has your daughter, you have to go and rescue her. Not that cliche rescue the princess plot. Chuck does all these things because he loves his daughter, and zombies happen to be in the way between him and saving his daughter, or giving his daughter a normal life. And it's a very strong point to be made about the relationship between father and daughter characters in such games such as, obviously, the most common of um, situations would be, I believe, maybe Silent Hill 2 and 3. If you think about it, I mean, this whole father-daughter relationship and what you overcome for the family, it's a very interesting tale, and I appreciate that the game doesn't try and force this idea into your face. Because, really, it's subtle enough for us to get it, and even amidst the hilarity, the ridiculousness of a grown man riding a child's unicycle, or not a unicycle, a tricycle, just, really, it let you discover the finer points of the game for itself. And I believe there is. You can take the game seriously if you want to. And that's great. I always love a game that has that freedom of choice between taking it seriously and not. Because that means you're approaching a wider audience that love the same thing. Zombies. And how to fuck them up. Seriously. Is there any el anything else to say to that? But as the credits roll, I, it only helps you but wonder what could possibly lie ahead in things like Off the Record or Case West. Maybe there'll be answers that we didn't know in Case Zero, some of the downloadable content for Dead Rising 2. Curiously enough, maybe we'll find out. Chuck Green, a man of the people, lost his wife in the Vegas City outbreak three years ago. And as much as the same, Katie lost her mother. It's a tragic story, but one that the game doesn't really dwell on too much. You may have noticed that possibly Chuck's escalation of anger towards Sullivan was actually possibly one of the more sa subtle character influences, like, uh, how do I put it? But one of the more subtle character progressions that I've ever seen in a game that's come from a Japanese developer. And it looks like we're coming to the end of the credits. Maybe this has been Dead Rising 2. Good night, everyone. Never stops, does it?